of the tape as you see that Galmore one year older, the height advantage in favor of Galmore along with the reach advantage as well. Both of them weighed in at the limit. Getting the table set for our live triple header from the fighting capital of the world here in Las Vegas. As we take a look at the rules, scoring on a 10-point must system, no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. You cannot be saved by the bell in any round, and only the referee can stop the fight. And now we will send it and moments away from sending up to our Hall of Famer. Here's the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and we welcome you to the joint here at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. As Premier Boxing Champions presents our big night of action and it's all brought to you by Mayweather Promotions, TGD Promotions and Showtime. Sponsored by Corona Extra who invites you to find your beach and Casa Noble Tequila, the noble pursuit. This bout in the ring is sanctioned by the IBF. The president, Daryl Peoples, supervisor, Randy Newman. Introducing our judges, scoring from ringside. From Reno, Nevada, Eric Cheek. From Villa Park, California, Max DeLuca. And from Las Vegas, Patricia Morse Jarman. And introducing our third man to the ring, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Tony Weeks. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Junior Middleweight World Title Eliminator. Introducing to you first on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the colors of the Jamaican flag, green, black, and yellow. Fighting out of Chicago, Illinois, by way of Kingston, Jamaica. He weighed in at a ready 153 pounds. His record, 20 wins, one loss and one draw, with 17 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the IBF number four world contender, introducing Nathaniel, the great Gallimore. And his opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white trunks with black and gold trim, hailing from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He weighed in at the junior middleweight limit of 154 pounds. His record stands at 24 wins. One loss and one draw and one no decision with 15 wins coming by way of knockout. He is currently ranked the IBF number five contender, number two by the WBC. Please welcome the former world title challenger, introducing Julian J. Rock Williams. Once again, a referee in charge, Tony Weeks, now to give instructions. All right, here we go. Okay, both trunks are high right here. Right here is good, even though it's gonna be low. Right here is good, even though it's gonna be low. I want a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times, above all, protect yourself at all times. Let's go. Our first fight tonight here in Las Vegas. Julian J. Rock Williams against Nathaniel Gallimore. The winner will be the number one contender to the IBF. Junior middleweight championship currently held by Jared Hurd. Williams, who is on a two fight win streak, says in regards to the trash talk with Nate Gallimore, he has done it in a classless way. I have no reaction to him. He's trying to draw himself, attention to himself, and doing it in a way that is not the classiest. Williams claims that Gallimore's gonna have to back it up here tonight. Gallimore, when asked about fighting Julian Williams, he said, this isn't the toughest opponent I've fought. I've been inside the ring against guys like Jason Rosario, who was surging, and also Justin Deloach. Jason was 12-0 with 10 knockouts. He said Julian Williams just got the recognition by getting knocked out from Jamal Charlo. You see on the back of the trunks of Nate Gallimore, it's RIP Ed Brown. That was one of his former stablemates, Ed Brown, killed in 
Chicago over a year and a half ago. Gallimore used to train on the west side of Chicago under George Hernandez, but after the fight with Deloach, he parted ways, and now his trainer is John Pullman, who incidentally used to train former heavyweight title contender Gerald Washington. Jillian Williams has been with the same trainer since day one, that being Stephen Breadman Edwards. Gallimore, a late start in regards to boxing, moved to Chicago when he was 12 from Jamaica, but picked up boxing amateur-wise at 23. His grandfather took him into the boxing gym and he fell in love with it. He won the Chicago Golden Gloves when he was 26 and turned pro shortly thereafter. His grandfather though passed away before Gallimore made his pro debut. For Williams, he's been boxing since he was 12 years of age, had 100 amateur fights, and has been a pro for nearly eight years. And incidentally, Williams just celebrated his 28th birthday two days ago. Gallimore and Williams still the feeling out process. Clearly both guys have quite a bit of respect between the two. This one should be, you know, the feeling out process is right now, but give them a little time and they will certainly heat up. The press conference was certainly very heated. The weigh-in stare down as well. Williams using his jab. Coming into tonight's matchup. They weighed in, Williams weighed in at 154 pounds, Gallimore 153. Williams stepped on the scale tonight and weighed 170, Gallimore 161. So 16 pounds overnight for Williams, only eight for Gallimore. Nearing the final moments of round one, this IBF junior middleweight eliminator. Ray Flores joining you here ringside in Las Vegas as we near the end of the first. Take a little water. There you see Jillian Williams. Put something on his head. Stay nice and relax. Wait till your heart rate go down and start to go to work. You tried to throw a big right hand that round and that was too big, you hear me? Say what you jab. His fans are going to get impatient. They're going to be mad at him for, for, for being in a boxing match. And that's when you jab around him and you drop your right hand. Don't throw no long, crazy right hands and nothing crazy. Let your body warm up. Mental heat. Okay, when he's jabbing you, don't pull straight out. Yeah, keep the hand up. Just trying to shoot that right hand over the top, okay? Nice and relax. Deep breath. All right. You don't got to go crazy. In a few rounds, we'll pick up the pressure, but we need to make sure that he's, he's expanding mental energy. So you listen to the two corners. Stephen Edwards telling Julie Williams, look, this is what we want. His fans are going to get mad at him for being involved in a boxing match. For Gallimore, they want, they urged him, John Pullman said, they want Williams to extend mental energy, so they want to apply the pressure. When it came to what he learned in the loss to Jamal Charlo, Julian Williams had this to say. He said, I thought I was doing well, so I never pushed the panic button after it didn't go my way. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. The plan was always to improve each fight and each day, and that is what we are doing. Williams actually spent the last few weeks at training camp. Nice left hook followed by a straight right hand at the snack nutrition facility that is led by Victor Conti. Did some conditioning work and also continued to improve on his fitness and Victor Conti has a plethora of snack nutrition products out there that Williams says he feels very fresh and is really his body is feeling better at 28 than what he did when he was 22-23. Gallimore using his jab followed by that straight right hand but Williams is content being in the center of that ring. Here Gallimore he needs to make this a rough and tumble affair and make it more of a we're all on the inside for Williams. He comes from Philadelphia, so he can box, he can punch, he can do multiple things. Not to say Gallimore can't, but Williams has that, can no doubt go back to that flick, that slick Philly South Side style. Williams using his jab and Gallimore still trying to find the opening. For Gallimore, seven straight victories all by stoppage. Last year having defeated Jason Rosario here in Las Vegas. 
also halted Justin Deloach, who at that time was the one six in a row, the right hand that came across the top. But Williams is still having his way, and Gallimore isn't throwing as much. I'm surprised because Gallimore was quite vocal in the lead up to this fight. I don't know if this is his game plan to have Williams settle into a rhythm, but so far, J Rock from Philadelphia is getting into his rhythm as Gallimore pounds the body of Williams. And Gallimore relaxed and almost has like a snicker on his face. A kind of a smile, kind of a scowl in the same way. Stop, stop, so. stop, stop, stop. Let him up. Joey Williams coming off of a win over Ishe Smith dating back to November of last year here in Las Vegas. And that is the end of the second as Gallimore talks to Williams as he goes to the corner. There you see it is Landy Lada, the American dream, having won six in a row. He puts his WBA super middleweight crown on the line against this man, the undefeated Swift Jared Hurd from Echo Kick, Maryland. Hurd having come off a win over Austin No Doubt Trot in October of last year. Made his first successful title defense, now puts his IBF crown on the line against a man who he feels everyone has avoided, that being Edislandi Lada. Lada coming 34 years of age from the Cuban School of Boxing, close to 400 amateur fights. He has been in there with Canelo Alvarez, Pedro Angulo, Paul Williams. And back to live action here, round number three. This one is scheduled for 12 here at the Hard Rock. Also, what is unique about this matchup is that they're opposing cut men. You have Mike Rodriguez, who's in the corner of Julian J. Rock Williams, Andrew Rodriguez, Mike Rodriguez's son, who is the cut man for Nate Gallimore. So it is a family affair here in Las Vegas in regards to the two combatants with the Rodriguez family, both cut men for Gallimore and Williams. Nice shot to the body by oh, Julian Williams, hands, as you see in the front row, Floyd, Money oh, Mayweather. Stop, 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 stop. Watch it, let him go right Tony to Week separates them. And I gave the first two rounds to Julian Williams based on his boxing ability. Gallimore is having some issues when it comes to trying to get on the inside and impose his will upon Williams. Williams with his jab, settling in. This is the pace and the tempo that Williams wants to fight at. Nice left hook to the body by Williams. Don't hold the ball. Don't Some hold shots downstairs. Stop, 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 stop. Listen Tony watch Weeks gets on the inside. He said, watch the holding. Galma starts off with the left hook, followed by an uppercut, but a double left hook to the body by Williams. Williams looking to break down. Gallimore, Gallimore shoots a right hand. Both guys exchanging right hands close distance. Williams with an uppercut. Williams sitting down on his punches as is Gallimore. If you're Gallimore, this is where you have to do your best work. He should step a little bit. Hands free. Just step behind a little bit to try to get some leverage behind. Stop, 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 stop. That Come uppercut. On, Williams swarming Nick go. Gallimore. And that is experience on the behalf of Williams as Gallimore has the significant reach advantage. John Coleman, the corner, the trainer of Nate Gallimore, urging Gallimore, stop, stop. where's the jab? Hey, where's my jab at, Nate? I got you. Come on, hands free, hands free. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, here we go. And Tony Weeks gets in the middle of them once again, a left hook. And found its mark for Gallimore. Gallimore, this is when he needs to do his best work, but Williams stop, stop, stop. is stop. showing Watch his veteran medal about holding. And I know that Tony Weeks has warned him, but if you're Williams, this is what you have to do. You cannot allow the longer fighter to get full leverage behind his punches. Stop, stop. And Williams is swarming Gallimore, disrupting his flow. And his rhythm as well. Jeff followed by a right hand. That 
ends the third. You won that round on the inside. Yo, listen though, get your breathing down. Towel on the head, towel on the head. He's just trying to keep it down from the punches, right? And here is some body work from Julian Williams. And look at the exchange of body shots. As you saw, Williams go into the body, followed by Gallimore with that uppercut right to the abdomen that was on the bolt line, on the belt line. And here you see Julian Williams. Is he looking for that opening? Look at the craftiness of Julian Williams placing that right hand to the abdomen, followed by a left hook to the solar plexus of Gallimore. And Gallimore not liking that too much. So far, this has played out the way Julian Williams expected it to. Round number four, this one's scheduled for 12. Gallimore had success there in the third, but overall, the body of work you would have to give to Julian Williams. Gallimore is looking to pressure Julian Williams, but he's got to extend on the jab. There are different kinds of jabs in boxing. The, the jab that is just, that is an authoritative jab. The jab that's just out there to kind of bait you a little bit. The jab that is just nonstop in your face. What Gallimore is doing is he's kind of holding up. He's not fully extending on his jab, and I think he is worried about being countered by Julian Williams. But he's got to extend and commit to the jab if you're Gallimore, because Gallimore coming in with power punches is not going to throw Julian Williams off has his game. Has free, has free. Stop, stop, stop. Here we go. Come on, here we go. And Williams holding on to Gallimore and then punching. I got you, I got you. Let me And more chance that they are saying in the corner of Gallimore that Williams is holding. And a jab, there is that jab that Gallimore needs to use. Because he has not been committing to it, whereas Williams has been. Aesthetically, this is turning into a fight that is disrupting, their, both guys are disrupting their flow. Gallimore needs the space and the distance for, from the reach standpoint. Throws a chopping right at downward at Williams. Gallimore is looking solid here in the fourth. He seems to be the busier of the two. Straight right hand that connected by Gallimore. Gallimore doubling up on that jab. Now he's finding his range when it comes to the jab. Is the 29-year-old out of Jamaica. Uppercut that missed by Gallimore, but the jab is right in the grill of Julian Williams. And that straight right hand down the middle. And Gallimore has adjusted. Rather than Gallimore having to be the come forward aggressive fighter, it is Gallimore who is now adapting and is more the counter punch with the same time using his jab. So he's allowing Julian Williams to come forward and a big right hand that connected right through the guard of Julian Williams. Stop, stop, stop. Let him up. Williams with the big deep breath, the left hook. That found its mark for Gallimore. Now Gallimore with some uppercuts. Gallimore really applying the pressure as Williams seems to be staggered. Tail end of the fourth round. This has been an action packed forward here in Las Vegas. As the Jamaican fans, you are hearing them voice their appreciation for Nate Gallimore. And coming up, a rematch from December of last year. Caleb Truex, who won a world title at the age of 34 from Minnesota, went to London, now making his Las Vegas debut against the first man to become a world champion and claim Olympic gold for England, that being this man, James DeGale. DeGale has vowed, if I cannot be Caleb Truex, in this rematch, I will retire at the age of 32. That coming up next from Las Vegas. Round five, this one is scheduled for 12. This is an IBF 
junior middleweight eliminator matchup. The winner will have a date with the winner of Lada and Hurd. The IBF champion, Jared Hurd, he puts his title on the line later tonight against that is Landy Lada. I gave that fourth round to Nate Gallimore. So on my scorecard, three to one in favor of Julian Williams. Now we'll see if Gallimore decides to be the aggressor or if he goes back to the game plan that he did in the fourth, and that's be more the counter puncher, but also jab as well. Williams. Now Williams is the one who isn't throwing the jab with as much frequency as he would like it. And you know what? It's so emblematic, and there's a reason why they say the jab is the most fundamental punch in boxing. It sets up everything else. When Galmo was active committing to the jab, he had success in the fourth. I had him winning the round. In the first three rounds, it was Julie Williams using his jab, coming forward, tying up Nate Gallimore. Gallimore shakes his head and he sort of blows his nose for a quick second. 100 seconds left here in the fifth. And just based on sheer ring generalship, I give the first half of this round to Nate Gallimore. Push back Julian Williams. Downward right hand for Williams. Both tie up now, and I wonder how long Tony Weeks is going to allow them to do that. And he steps right in. The right hand to the body, followed by another right uppercut to the left side of the ribcage of Julian Williams. Gallimore says he is bred for success. He fights in the memory of his grandfather who introduced him to boxing. Said he was a troubled youth in Chicago, but boxing saved him. Gallimore fighting on the inside. We'll see if he'll take half a step back and unload an uppercut. There you see, right there, the uppercut got through the guard, followed by the right hand. Gallimore, and Tony Weeks gets inside. So Gallimore seems to have controlled this fifth round with his inside work, followed by more consistency jabbing-wise. A chopping downward right hand for Gallimore. That ends the fifth. We will take a look back. There you see there is a cut underneath the left eye of Julian Williams. You promise? Breathe a little bit. Take some water on it. You watching that uppercut? Listen, I'm going to stop screaming for you to box if, if you need a second win. You hear what I'm Keep saying? Back. Keep him back. And let's take a look at this is where it might have happened as that is a clash of heads right there, boom. And that is above the left eye of Julian Williams. So it was not caused from a punch, it was caused from a headbutt. Mike Rodriguez working on the, on the cut of Julian Williams. There you see the lovely Tawny Jordan joining us here in Las Vegas. Nate Gallimore and Julian Williams, Mike Rodriguez, a very good cut man, one of the best in the business, working on that left eye, the cut above the left eye of Julian Williams. And what stood out in that, in what we heard from Stephen Edwards telling Julian Williams, he goes, it looks like you're fighting with demons. He goes, to give you a second win, I'm gonna shout for you to box when I think you need to. And Julian Williams hasn't been the same in the fourth and the fifth. We'll see what we see here in the sixth. But I don't know if it's hesitation or that he's fighting timid, but he looked very good in the first three rounds. But in the fourth, you saw like a change for Gallimore using his jab and really being and using more of his physical ability to impose his will upon Julian Williams. Left hand up. Left hand up. 
Gallimore felt like he could crack Williams and that Williams would succumb to his pressure. And Williams, a nice left hook that connected by Gallimore. Big right hand though by Julian Williams. That was his best punch in about two rounds plus. You know, Gallimore talking to Williams, kind of baiting him on the inside, maybe setting up a potential uppercut there. Stop, stop, I got you. Coming up on 80 seconds to go here in the sixth. Stop, stop. In the corner, Gallimore urging him to attack the body. But Gallimore is being active here. Williams with shots to the body. And Gallimore trying to take control, sticking that jab in the face of Williams, but Williams jab it as well. Williams no, no, with no, 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 no. Stop, stop straight on, right no, no, no. hand. <laughs> left hook to the right side of the body by Williams. Stop, stop. Turn around. Right now, Julian Williams has gotten back to his pacing. The left hook to the body by Williams. Now he needs to separate a little bit and shoot a right hand as Gallimore has his head down for a brief second. And Gallimore has his head down, like tilted to the side. Williams should take a step to his right, half a step to his right, and then throw that right hand. Because I don't know if Gallimore would be prepared for that. Especially because Gallimore is in this jab mindset. No, 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 stop. Let him up, let him up, let him up. Turn around. And that's the end of the six. We're halfway home. Accidental. This is what I need. I need you to catch your breath, stay relaxed. Now, I need you to let your hands go in combinations, okay? I need you punching a little more, okay? Because these rounds, it's hard to tell, and they're probably going to give them those close rounds. I, I need you to punch when you get close to them. Let it out slow. Deep breath. Let it out slow. Don't forget your jab. Don't forget you take your, your recoup now, right? You never too many right hands, mate. No right. good. Okay, don't take nothing for granted. And here is Gallimore with that left hook. And Williams, look, you look at Gallimore now, trying to find that opening. There was that jab followed by, as you see Gallimore looking for his opening, using the jab was Gallimore round seven. So far through the first half of the fight, I give that sixth round to Williams. So I have Williams ahead four to two against Gallimore. Again, that's just my unofficial, unbiased scorecard. But you heard John Pullman tell Gallimore, he goes, look, they're going to give these close rounds. It is quite possible they're gonna give these close rounds to Williams. And I saw that being a close round, but enough to where Williams was more active than Gallimore. Stop, stop, I got you, stop. A left hook to the body by Julian Williams. And Williams comes from Philadelphia grew up old school. Stephen Edwards says he's quite high and believes that Julian Williams will absolutely claim championship gold. They learned quite a bit in that stop, fight stop, against Jamon Charlie. Nice straight right hand by Gallimore. And if you're Gallimore, he's gotta be more aggressive. He's gotta throw punches when Gallimore throws and has high volume and a high work rate, it is more to his benefit. The Stop, I got you. More punches that are thrown in the round, it favors Gallimore. The more slow plotting tactical fight would favor Williams. A big right hand on the temple by Gallimore as Williams goes inside. Williams steps inside with the left hook. Sitting down in his punches is Julian Williams. Stop, I got you, up. Williams has that laceration and has been halted above his left eye from the clash of heads two rounds ago. I got you, Williams I got you. Out in Gallimore. And again, this is the kind of round that favors Julian Williams. Because he's tying up, he's making stop, this stop. 
a fight where Gallimore's having a hard time getting off here in the sixth and the seventh. As you saw in the fourth and fifth in which Gallimore won, clearly Stop, he was you. boxing well, using the ring, getting a lot of leverage behind his shots. Nice right hand that stop, got stop, stop, past stop. the guard of Williams. Nice left hook by Gallimore. Stop, but stop. again, when this fight is being held at close distance, and when Williams is crowding Gallimore, this is the kind of round that Williams wants. Because Gallimore isn't able to land and get off as much as he stop wants. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop, Final stop, stop, stages stop. of the seventh. That's the end of the seventh. You remember that? Yeah. Keep shoveling. Yes. And here we take a look at Nate Gallimore with that left hook followed by that right hand. Partially grazing right hand by Nate Gallimore. But so far, as we so watch the uppercut, see him. Yep. Eighth, eighth. Let's go. Let's go. This is what you want mental warfare, baby. We got it. Bro, John, not, stay off the ropes. John Pullman telling Nate Gallimore to stay off the ropes. He goes, This is what you want mental warfare. We're so far. Julie Williams, he surrendered. Round four and five, but is taken over here in six and seven. Williams asking Stephen Bredman Edwards what round this is. And they also urged Williams to watch out for the uppercut. It was that uppercut which did him in in the fight with Jamal Charles, at least that started the downward movement, stop, stop, stop. the downward spiral for Julie Williams. Dating back to that, his lone loss in December of 2016. Winner of this fight will be the number one contender of the IBF junior middleweight crown, currently held by Swift Jared Hurd. That could change tonight as Hurd puts his title on the line, along with Eslandi Lada, who will put his WBA title up stop, 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 stop. Williams and Gallimore both connect at the same time. Here, Gallimore needs to keep his distance. Gallimore cannot. Stop, stop, Wait stop. too long. He's got to use his jab. And again, in the fourth and fifth round, when he's using his jab and sticking in the face of Williams, he was able to get off. He was using his space. He was creating distance. He was gaining leverage. Stop, but stop. this kind of fight, where Williams is jabbing his way on the inside, tying up Gallimore, frustrating the 29-year-old, this favors Julian Williams. Because Williams is stop, doing stop. enough to be able to, he's aggressive enough, he's throwing more punches to get the attention of the judges. A sharp right hand on the inside that connected for Williams, followed by a left hook. And Gallimore, instead of coming forward, should step back. Step back and then throw that uppercut. Stop, 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 stop. Or step to his side, step to his right, and then throw a right hand. I know easier said than done, but Williams is at close distance. This stop, is no, the fight in which he wants. And Gallimore throws a left uppercut, but that misses. Stop, 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 and stop. Williams is just barreling into Gallimore. And Gallimore, where's the jab here? As Williams is coming forward, there was no jab. And whereas Williams is kind of coming in, he's tying up Gallimore, frustrating him. A left hook by Gallimore. Stop, stop. And Tony Weeks is, it hasn't worked out for him. Shot downstairs by Gallimore. 10 seconds remaining here in the eighth. 
and Williams almost goes into the front row, at least through the ropes. That ends the eighth. Punch, when he walks to you, that's when you punch downstairs and upstairs. He'll stop coming in. Just keep your knees bent, hands up, go to the body, go to the head, and then turn so his back's against the ropes. Do you hear me? And you gotta pull your left hand out of there. Talk to me. Yeah. What you gonna do? Huh? I'm gonna lift hand out, straight on. With the white two hands. Yeah, you, yeah, and then bring him to the head. Yeah. He's just wrestling what you're trying to make. As we observed some of the work yeah. from round eight, Julian Williams ducking underneath the left hook. And you see J Rock close distance inside. And a right hand boom. So I have it six to two in favor of Julian Williams. I can also see that round going to Gallimore. So six to two in favor of Julian Williams, at least on my unofficial card. Julian Williams is doing what he needs to to gain the advantage. Sometimes you have to have, you're involved in fights like this, which are fight at close distance and you're not able to gain a lot of leverage behind your shots. But who is going to be the one to throw more punches? Who's going to be the one to stop, stop. literally impose their will upon the other man? Williams walking in tonight at 170, Gallimore at 161. Big shot by Williams, staggered Gallimore. And Gallimore, stationary. And when John stop, Coleman stop, stop, stop. was speaking with Gallimore, you could hear the gasp of breath that Gallimore is trying to gain. And they are urging and telling Gallimore, as I hear over here the corner, John Pullman, he goes, as Williams is coming on the inside, you need a punch. And when Williams has been coming forward, tying up Gallimore, he has not been throwing his much. And also, from the fifth round, we have seen a lack of a jab from Gallimore. Whereas Williams is jabbing at times. He's throwing punches to the body. He's finding those openings on the inside. Stop, 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 stop. And Gallimore telling Tony Weeks about it that he's leading with his head. It's all within the realm of the rules. Stop, stop, stop. 80 seconds remaining here in the ninth. Gallimore going to the body. Also make sure wherever you're joining us around the world, participate in the social media conversation. Follow me at SBR Flores. Again, that is at SBR Flores right now. The action is intensifying between Gallimore and uppercut followed by a right hand. But with the exception of those two punches, it has been Julian Williams who is about hustling. Nate Gallimore here in the ninth. Nice jab by Williams. Stop, I got you. Let him go. Julian Williams, they're both close distance, within range of each other. A straight right hand by Gallimore moments ago. Williams with that jab. And Gallimore using the uppercut, but to no avail. Stop, 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 stop. Let him go. The jab for Joy Williams. And a big right hand that caught the attention of Gallimore. And that is the end of the ninth. Catch your breath. Breathe, relax. Every time you punch, okay? Every time you punch in space, you hurt him and bother him. But what you're doing is you're accepting clinches. Do not accept a clinch. When he walks to you, bend your knees with your hands up and punch two, three punches. The body and the head. And then feign him, use your jab here and there. When he wants to wrestle with you, stay relaxed. And as soon as you get space, that's and when you want to punch. here we see the left hook that Julian Williams started to implement. That was a big left hook that caught the attention of Gallimore. And Gallimore bent, you could tell he was clipped and he felt that upstairs, boom. Right there on the jaw of Gallimore. And he shot the right hand by Julian Williams. But again, we'll go back and here's a big right hand from Julian Williams. 
The jab set it up, and then Williams, boom, right there, catching the jump of Nate Gallimore, round 10. Stop, stop, stop. And Pullman telling Gallimore, he goes, look, I need you to stop getting involved in these clinches. I have Williams ahead comfortably, six to, yeah, I can see it, seven to two or six to three, but there were some close rounds in there. And with the way judging is in boxing, you never know they're gonna have it. And Gallimore's trying to time the uppercut as Williams came forward. A left hook to the body by Williams. Another one. Gallimore's focused on head hunting, whereas Williams is pounding away on the body of Gallimore. Stop, stop, stop. I got you. And Gallimore, when he's tied up, he isn't even doing anything to try to get away from the break. He's not trying to create distance. He's just accepting these clinches, which he was admonished by, by his corner. Stop, I got you. Double hook by Jillian Williams to the body of Gallimore. And Williams is just so tough and durable. Jillian Williams, a big right hand that found its destination. Backing up and a sharp uppercut on the inside file by a left uppercut by Williams. Williams is summoning the will to try to break Gallimore and he used his shoulder to get Gallimore off of him and he followed that up with a straight right hand. Gallimore looking for that big shot, but that big shot from round six on has not been there. Joey Williams is showing this new wrinkle to his game. You knew that he was slick and that he had good boxing ability, but he is just this is a very close inside fight. And Williams is getting the better of these exchanges. And Gallimore has shown a tendency to hesitate. And a right hand on the temple by Williams. So a lot of the talk in which Gallimore did stop, 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 so far, he has been unable to back up when it comes to how vociferous he was regarding his ability to break Julian Williams. He's not been able to do that. Williams is doing his talking inside the ring. And coming up, our co-feature, Caleb Truex. Puts his IBF Super Middleweight crown on the line for the first time in the rematch against, from England, James DeGale. Caleb Truax, the father of one there. You see James DeGale, very focused, ready. He says he's totally healthy now. That was a bad night. He will rectify that defeat with the win here tonight. Two more rounds remaining in this matchup. Ray Flores ringside here in Las Vegas. Round 11, this one's scheduled for 12. Julian Williams and Nate Gallimore. I can see it seven to three or eight to two for J-Rock. But Gallimore has got to really come on strong. Gallimore actually separated from his trainer, George Hernandez, prior to this fight. He said he just clicked more with John Pullman and loves living in California. He got very good sparring as well in preparation for this fight. And Williams just wrestling Gallimore. Big right hand by Gallimore, followed by a left hook. Yeah. 
Gallimore stepping to his side, but has been unable to connect stop, with that stop, left hook. It was that left hook by Gallimore which sent Jason Rosario to the canvas last April. Shot on the inside by Gallimore. And Gallimore pressing Williams against the ropes, but back comes Williams to regain the center of the ring. Nice uppercut by Julie Williams. Stop, stop, I got you. Halfway point of the 11th. Oh, big left hook for Julie Williams, followed by a right cross. Two right crosses. Gallimore seems to be hurt. Julie Williams unloading on Gallimore. Gallimore backing up. Big left hook by Williams. Williams with the left hook, followed by a right hand. Gallimore in serious trouble. Tony Weeks watching the action. Stop, stop, stop. Gallimore was buzzed with that left hook by Julian Williams. He may be out on his feet. Julian Williams looking to gain an emphatic stoppage. What a sweet victory this would be for the Philadelphia native. Amidst all the talking Nate Gallimore did in the lead up to this fight, stop, for stop, Williams stop. to be able to gain the stoppage would be so apropos in his mind. Big right hand by Williams. Williams really unloading upon Gallimore. He dips down, does Gallimore looking to tie up, but he is literally on very wobbly legs. Williams tattooing Gallimore. Stop, stop, stop. I got you. Williams stalking Nate Gallimore. Gallimore was hurt big time with that left hook that started it all for Julian Williams. But he's been able to remain vertical. A shot to the abdomen by Williams. This is a big round for Julian Williams and Gallimore stumbling to his corner. Sit down, sit down. Talk to me, Nate. Sit down, give me a mouthpiece. How you feel? Huh? How you feel? What? Hey, man. Look at me. Yeah. Tell me what year it is. Tell me the year. What year? And here we see the work. This is what started it all. Boom! That big left hook by Julian Williams, and you saw Williams with that right cross, followed by uppercuts, and Williams knew that he had Gallimore hurt. And we'll take a look at it again from close distance. Boom! There it was, and you saw the body language of Gallimore totally change. I, I think he's fine, but you know what to do. Okay, you got it, brother. I need you to hook with him. Talk to me. Can you, talk to me. Can you do what I'm asking you to do? Can you do what I'm asking you to do? Can you do what I'm asking you to do? Can you do what I'm asking you to do? Talk to me. John Pullman trying to get every bit of last bit inspiration to Gallimore. He asked him three times, can you do what I'm asking you to do? And Gallimore got himself up by putting his left hand on the top rope to walk to the center of the ring. I think Gallimore's still hurt and I wonder if Williams knows that. Julian Williams has certainly showcased that he can really dig down deep. Not that he couldn't do it before, but against a guy who has been so like, chastising him, baiting him in the lead up to this fight, Julian Williams has come out and is displaying how tough he is and without question making Philadelphia proud. I got you. And Steven Edwards should be absolutely thrilled with what he has seen out of stop, Julian stop, stop. Williams. Stop. Watch that. This Watch would be that. a sweet, satisfying birthday, late birthday present for Come Julian on, Williams. And she just turned 28 two days ago. One hundred seconds left here in the fight. Stop, 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 stop. And Tony Week separates them, but Julian Williams was able to adjust. He was jabbing a lot in the first half of the fight, and now he's been able to close the distance. Nice little sharp uppercut as he took a step back and connected against Gallimore who had his head down. But Gallimore has just gone to sort of survival mode. The doctor went inside the ring to check on Gallimore, asking him what year it was, and he said Gallimore's fine. 
but still, it is this ability by Julian Williams who has changed up his game plan, jab it on the inside, outboxing Gallimore, and then he decided to pressure Gallimore after the fifth round. When Gallimore was having success, tying him up, throwing more punches than him, finding the openings. And John Pullman still is really letting Gallimore know to keep punching. Because Gallimore has been less active tonight than what we've seen in his previous seven straight victories by stoppage. Stop, stop, I got you. Williams ties up. They have 22 seconds left to do something big. But this would be a very big victory for Julian Williams. And now Williams is talking to Gallimore inside the ring. This would be vindication for the man known as J-Rock. Straight right hand that connected by Gallimore. And that is the end of the fight. And they don't even embrace Julian Williams with his hand raised. And he has every right to be thrilled and excited because he looked terrific tonight. And Gallimore, you can tell is disappointed. We appreciate all of you joining us wherever you are in the UK, Australia, all over the world. We appreciate your love and staying up late with us. Or good morning to you if you're across the pond. In the big league, gotta come to you. And Sam Watson uh, telling Julian Williams, saying you're in the big leagues now. And Sam Watson, a master motivator, one of the handlers for Julian Williams. Mike Rodriguez, one of the best cut men in the business, working on that left cut above the eye of Julian Williams and Gallimore. You could tell that with this being their first fight together with John Bowman, Bowman cannot be happy with what he saw out of the fact that Gallimore did not listen to Pullman. He was, Pullman was telling him, we want you to be active. And here's Julian Williams. And Williams with that straight right hand to the body. And you know what? The body work of Julian Williams has to be touched on because Williams really focused on hooks to the body. And that seemed to take away some of the steam from Nate Gallimore. And also, Williams just was in the chest of Nate Gallimore. I don't know if Gallimore was ready for Julian Williams to step to him and to be in his chest in the way that he did. I think that Gallimore and his entire team thought that Williams was going to box as we saw him in the first three rounds and then Gallimore was successful in the fourth and the fifth. But then Stephen Edwards, the trainer of Julian Williams, they made an adjustment and they decided to fight on the inside and that was the best decision they could have made. And now we'll set it up to ring announcer. Here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we go to the scorecards. Here are our score totals. Judge at ringside, Patricia Morse Jarman scores about 114 to 114, even a draw. Overruled by judges Eric Cheek. He scores the bout 116 to 112. And Max DeLuca scoring the bout 117 to 110 in favor of the winner by way of majority decision. He is the winner of the IBF Junior Middleweight World Title Eliminator, Julian J. Rock Williams. So Julian Williams wins by majority decision. Scores were 114, 114, 116, 112, 117, 110. I thought that was deserved. It should have been unanimous. But that draw upsets me a little bit out of Patricia Moore's Jarman. But nonetheless, Julian Williams gets the majority decision victory. He becomes hey, the hey, number hey, one Nate. contender. You happy now? And Julian Williams talking to Nate Gallimore. He goes, are you Be happy now? Time. It's a different level up here. Be humble next time. Telling Gallimore, be humble next time. Because it's a different level up here. Philadelphia, man. Philadelphia ain't scared nobody.